intro music play. All right, what's up, everybody? Oh, my gosh, we are doing a podcast. First one of 2022 uh, here at BBA, and uh, I even have a special guest. Um, my little helper friend, Kyle Pulsler, is not here. He's actually up in uh, McCall, Idaho right now, testing hill climb stuff with uh, Jack Struthers and, uh, from Carl's, so that'll be really fun. So I have a fill-in guest, Jordan Yankee from Arctic FX. Jordan, um, welcome to Colorado and BBA. How are you doing? It's great to be here, man. I tell you, it always is. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to fill in. I mean, I really am. You're, you're a great fill in. <laughs> I'm a great fill you, in. You, you definitely talk way less smack than Kyle. Um, and um, let's, so we've got uh, a lot of fun stuff to, to chat about. Um, I'm looking at your list that uh, you've got some pretty fun questions. And I'll give you, give you guys just some quick history. You know, Jordan is literally one of – um, one of the longest running sponsors we have here at BBA, um, yourself and Chad Colby came out, um, yep. in 2000, well, it was our first year, 2008, um, and, uh, at our original place in Kremlin, which was like my house, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, the old shop and the Articat M sleds and, yeah. and, um, so lots, lots of history, uh, with us, you've definitely helped. Um, build our brand, build our reputation in the industry, and along the way, you've uh, uh, created some super cool snowmobiles. Um, you should be pretty pretty proud of that. Yeah, we're pretty proud of it, and I, I you know, I could say the same about you. Like you've uh, you've helped us come up as a brand um, more than I think anybody knows. So. Um, now you know it. Uh, That's it. We're a team, dude. Yeah, we're it's a team. team. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, I, and I think, uh, and it'll be interesting to see some of your questions here. But I think that's been you know that's been our priority number one from the beginning uh when you start talking about sponsorship and partnership and all of this stuff is um it, it it's it is a team it's a team effort it's not what you can do for me it's not what i can do for you it's what we can do for each other and, and i think that's what makes a successful partnership and what for all of those aspiring snowmobilers out there who are wanting to uh, make it in this this incredibly tough industry to make it as a writer and or even a company um, is to you know it it is a team effort and so that's uh, that's something that we've done I think pretty well over the past oh yeah and um, you know excited to see see where the future is so with that being said here's what I here's what I want to do um, I'm really curious you you've come all the way here um, from Michigan. Yep. Uh, we got to go play on the snow a little bit. That was really fun. Like one of the deepest days oh, ever. Oh, my God. Play is not the word. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's like a jungle gym compared to a circus. That mm -hmm. was amazing. That was that was yeah. a lot of fun. All um, time. So I know you're going to have some questions for me, and I've got, I'll have got i have a couple questions for you too because, um, you know, a lot of people know – some things about me um, because of, you know, the history, but uh, it'll be cool to, to kind of interact and, and tell your side and my side and, and all that fun stuff. So why don't, why don't you kick us off? Yeah. I mean, it's cool that we're um, doing this podcast because it kind of does double duty. We're starting a series called insight where um, it, it's kind of a three prong word. It's uh, insight into things and uh, you know, goals insight and uh, you know, insight a riot. Right. So that's what we're trying to do is sit down with guys like Chris and really get to know them because I don't think there's a lot of that out there. People think they know about you and um, it's way different from the inside looking out, I, you know. Yeah. So that's that was our goal with this series. And uh, I mean, it, it should be out next year, probably in August and uh, hope it works out. That's but, awesome. Uh, well, and, and speaking of that, I, I and then we'll, we'll get rolling here, but I think that's, that is really interesting and, and it's, it's easy to take things for granted and just like, of course, people know that, you know, I started in Sled Next 3 and I was doing freestyle and yep. X games, and, but you're right. I mean, for, for what social media has done um, and how it has come on the scene. That's, that's really new. Um, so a lot of people don't even know like that. I used to jump my snowmobile a lot and 
I enjoyed jumping and I still enjoy jumping except I live in a place uh, and guide in a place every day that just for some reason we don't have jumps. Um, I, when I go to Canada or I go to Wyoming, I like drool. Uh, I'm drooling, like looking and seeing all the terrain that those guys get to go. Yeah, have fun at. that's true. Yeah. I mean, uh, so I, I think it's kind of like uh, association and time maybe like, so, you know, we've been, we've been in business artifacts for, 17 years now i think and um a good 12 of that probably was was with you so we started in 2004 to the yeah that's about right yep um and so what i'm seeing now which is different is there's a lot of this younger crowd who's coming up who weren't associated in time like within that you know eight year span of knowing and seeing you in those films and seeing what you've done and stuff so it really hit home like we brought i brought jacob levine one of uh one of our employees here, he's a photo shoot guy and he does video and he does all this stuff, uh, fresh out of Colorado. Uh, what's the college called? Colorado. Colorado Mountain College. So, um, came right out of college, started working for us. And, um, we were having a talk about you on the way back from Kremlin. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was just filling him in on stuff. He had no idea. Yeah. And it's just, you know, if you take someone who's like seven, eight years older, they they remember that stuff, right? But kids coming up, right? They just um, they need to know this stuff because you're such an icon in the industry. Well, let's educate them. Yeah. Why don't why, why don't you start asking me some questions? All right. So, um, and and I may not even know the answer yeah. to this because uh, I got a lot of questions uh, about this. What made you start BBA? I mean, I know you, you saw a need for this in the industry, and you saw, um, you know, the people the mountain segment was really coming into its own at the time for a lot of the work that you did with the M and the travel mm -hmm. that you did and the input that you gave them to make that a better sled. And, uh, really the, the to me, the first real mountain sled was something that you worked on Articat to, yeah, to the improve. M. Yeah. The M series. Yeah. So, um, what made you want to start BBA? Was it, was it traveling and, and doing those sorts of things with, with people and showing them the M that made you think, wow, there's a real base out there that really wants to try this style of riding out. Yeah, that that was definitely a stepping stone to it. Um, I think where it, so where it all started was as a kid, I wanted to become a professional snowmobiler. Um, I didn't even know what that meant. Hmm. You know, what it, what is a professional snowmobiler? So, well, someone who gets paid to ride a snowmobile. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you watch Moto and you kind of take that. Um, they've got their own little world, but they're real, that thing really didn't exist in snowmobiling. No, you, you know. No. You, you, and we've talked about this on, on some podcasts and stuff, but, you know, the only people who were making money snowmobiling was snowcrossers at the time. Yeah. Um, so I tried that. I wasn't very good at that, but I liked jumping. Jumping led me into freestyle. Freestyle started to, like, it – it wasn't really making me money, but it was getting my name out there. And, um, that's what has to happen, um, to become involved in something like snowmobiling or a sport. Like we all know Travis Pastrana, right? Well, sure. where did Travis start? You know, Travis was just a, a passionate kid who was really good on a dirt bike that needed to make a name for himself to become Travis Pastrana. And so, Kind of using some of that um, that theory of well, I just need to get my name out there and differentiate myself, and and so you know there was um, there was freestyle, there was sled next, there was filming, there was all these things, right? And so we're fast forwarding over a lot of things to get over to how BBA because in that in that in that time, so like let's just say freestyle days are like two thousand three, four, five, six, right, right there for X games is 2007, right? Yeah. The back, back country scene, you know, there is no professional back country riders. It does not Zero. exist. The mountain riding scene was getting a little stale, right? It was like, there was that, um, shoot climbing and open hill stuff that we all, like I grew up doing and that was getting a, a little mundane and boring and um and we needed we needed something different and and you know in comes 2005 the 
the 05 M7, right? Yeah. So game changer. Yeah, game changer. I'm with, uh, and I'm riding for Articat at the time, and and just like, just getting kind of blown away with like what is going on here? I mean, a little different riding technique, able to access areas you've never been able to ride before. And people like saying, what is going on here? What are you doing? <laughs> that shouldn't be possible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, I heard a lot of that. And so, you know, the, the, the question you asked me was like, when did BBA kind of start being a concept for you? And um, that in the winter of 2006, Articat hired me, uh, so to actually 2005, 2006, Articat hired me to take a truck and a trailer and a bunch of snowmobiles and go take people and show them how cool our sled is. And I mean, talk about, you know, thinking as a kid, you made it. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. literally this was the dream job. Sure. I mean, like. Here's the here's the credit card. Here's the and you know what was so crazy? I mean, I was fairly young at that time, and literally they just give me a company truck, trailer, sleds, credit card, and said, "All right, well, I guess have a great winter." And I'm like, "Whoa, you know uh, this?" So it was a lot of responsibility put on my shoulders, and I took I took that very seriously, and I took a lot. I had a lot of pride in the job. Um, I it was. It was incredible. It was great networking, you, you know. So I was I was working with dealers. Um, the dealers would call up their their good customers and say, "Hey, we've got this dude coming out with a brand new sled that we really want you to ride and go check it out." And so, you know, it was really like that first concept of taking people out, showing them what sleds can do, and giving them an experience. And you know, it it's it taught me so many things, uh, sure. a lot, a lot of responsibility, um, reading people, reading terrain, learning new places, um, tr you know, logistics and traveling, like all of it. Right. So it was a really tremendous learning experience. And yeah, of course, like when I started seeing people's reactions and, and how much they enjoyed it and how much it was like, literally the, a one day event on the snow was revitalizing them for the sport. And, sure. and that was like, hmm, the light bulb was starting to turn on. Yeah. And it, it really kind of um, puts you in a spot where you, you're happy as well because you're, you're showing people something new and re and you can see that happen in people. Right. And that, that's really, it, it drives you. It's very yeah. rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. So the money, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, basically bought a brand new house, moved out of your old one mm -hmm. and turned it into a lodge. And you had to dump your life savings into that. That I was all imagine. scary. Um, yeah. and, and I speculate, I don't know for sure, but I remember around that time, and I don't think a lot of people know that you were in a Vin Diesel movie mm -hmm. and you were in Sweden riding Polaris IQRs with, they were like wrapped camo or something yep. like that. It was you and Paul Thacker, yep. right? Yep. So I always speculate you know, a lot of that seed money might have came from that movie you did because they had to pay you very well. There was two big events that happened in my life that without it, BBA wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Um, and so to think, you know, it's interesting. There's there's motivation. There's different motivations for, for certain things. X Games for me was, yeah, I wanted to go win a gold medal, but I needed money to start my business. Like straight up, yeah. that was my motivation was I'm going to go learn the backflip. I'm going to go win X Games and I'm going to like take me in this industry to the next level. So it wasn't about fame. It wasn't about, it was like, I needed damn money to like <laughs> pay for my house. I had, uh, you know, these ambitions of starting a business. And so that was, that was step one win X games, right? In a scary ass step, right? Because you don't know what direction you're going and you got a vision and you're, you're driving forward on it. I mean, that's all in, and that's who you are, right? I mean, at the end of the day, all in go throttle down. I believe in it. I believe in myself and I believe in other people. So, yeah. Yeah. So that was like, you know, that was a $50,000 event about, you know, winning 
and and um, sponsorship endorsements and everything. You know, that was about fifty grand, which again, like, doesn't even start to pay for trucks and trailers and sleds and houses and the staff and all that stuff, right? Yeah, it was a start. It was good, um, but then you know, the next really big event was um, was the Vin Diesel deal. And what's crazy is so. Again, so the time frame here is I was actually a district sales manager for Articat at that time, um, which was a really good time to be a DSM for CAT. I was actually making pretty good money, um, but I was traveling a lot and not being able to focus a ton on the snowmobile side of things because that job from a time perspective was very demanding yeah i knew i chad colby and other chad, dsm I mean, from back then yeah. i mean i he tell me stories and i'm like dude you well, you got extra batteries in your pocket to keep going this long you know yeah like when i'm in bed he's on the phone working yeah. so yeah yep. it's crazy it, it, it was it was a very demanding schedule which i enjoyed at the time i love i loved work i really liked work i liked the challenge of it and the reward at the end. Um, and so I, I enjoyed that. And, you know, a DSM job was a lot of commission based and I enjoy commission based cause it makes you work your ass off. Um, so and it's better than laying, laying fiber optic cable. I right? don't know. Fiber, <laughs> fiber was fun too. You know, that was, that was like my first real job. Fi I enjoyed fiber and it's funny looking back at that now. And like, I would enjoy, I would like to do it right yeah. now. Cause it's like, I love, it was fun traveling and the, the, so. Did you I, used to operate heavy equipment? Is that what I it was? didn't, no, no, no. Right. no. I, I liked, you know, it was, it was a, it was a different challenge, which I enjoyed and it was something I learned, but so kind of, you know, fast forward real quick, um, you know, making good money as a DSM, but the time side of it is really challenging for me on the sled side. So like I was a DSM trying to train for X games and all of this stuff. And it was really hard. And so there was a lot of things that fell into place for me there but is uh, it is it true that they made you come to yeah. thief river falls the it wasn't the day after yeah it was minneapolis uh oh, okay. it was terrible actually that the was the very day after that you was actually. like one of my biggest regrets was not calling them and telling them i i wish i could be there but i am going to be here with my wife and i'm going to party and i'm going <laughs> to like yeah. take a big breath but at the same time it was, and I remember it was, so my boss at the time, Don Fink, um, he's like, you know, I, you can go do X games, you can do all these things, but um, you will need to be there to show that you are committed to, to doing your job. And I understood it and respected it. And so it was crazy. I literally won X games, did my interviews, everyone's partying in the trailer and everything. And I say, man, you guys have a have a ball. And I got in the truck, and my parents like, we drove. She, they drove me straight to the airport. I had like a literally a five forty five a.m. flight to get to Minneapolis to be in time for the meeting. It was, it was like, <laughs> damn, dude, it was brutal. Talk about bittersweet. It was bittersweet. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that was tough. But um, so again, DSM. Uh, 2008, 2009, I get a call from, it's actually 2007, 2000, yeah, 2007, 2008, somewhere right around there. I get a call from Slednex. I'm, I'm a district sales manager for Articat, just won X Games. Like, things are ro doing pretty good, right? Yeah. Um, and I get a call from, from Slednex, and they say, hey, we just got a call from, a Hollywood producer that uh, they want um, they want some snowmobile stunts done in a Vin Diesel movie, um, but you know like it's 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 gonna be like a month um, where you're gonna have to be out of the country and I mean I I interrupted the conversation so quick I'm like hold on I'll call you right back and <laughs> I mean like literally you know I mean not exactly like that but like I got a few details and I literally called my boss at Arcat. I'm like dude I love you guys it's been awesome but I'm out I'm going to go do this job and I can make this you know a, it was another $50,000 deal so I can go make this 50,000 bucks a month and I'm going to go do it and then I am taking this money that I wanted X Games that I've been working my ass off for I'm going to take this Hollywood mo money and I'm starting my business and I'm go I'm doing it. And that's what it was. 
But it, it kind of turned out okay because they saw what you were doing as well, Articat, right? And they sponsored you. And so it wasn't the end of a relationship, right? It was kind of like a beginning of one, just a change. What was interesting about that, it was, it, it was, so I was with Articat from 2001 till 2009. So, right, it was kind of going that, and, you know, one thing I kept trying to do with the Articat deal was I kept trying to wiggle my way farther in. I wanted to be more a part of the development, more a part of the marketing side of things, more, you know, I had been a DSM, so I had a, these this great rapport with dealers and consumers, and I got to see behind the scenes in the factory and all this stuff. So, like, I wanted to bring, you know, some of this knowledge more into, into the program, and they just didn't want that uh, oh. with me. And so I... I knew there wasn't any longevity for them just giving me snowmobiles. And, okay. and so I, a lot, this was a misconception. A lot of people thought that players came to me, but that it was the exact opposite. Oh, wow. Okay. I, that's a new bit of news. There you go. Yeah. Cause I remember, I think it was, so at the time, like for me anyway, for my company, I couldn't afford to have a booth at heydays and do all these things. Like shows were off, like no way mm -hmm. was I going to be able to do those. Uh, at that point in time, but I think was it the very next year at Hayden? It was. You you told me about it. Something big's coming. Uh -huh. You know, we we traveled out there just to see all you guys and uh, me and my buddy Gary and in, in a I think we took a Prius there uh. <laughs> <laughs> back in the day. But so uh, yeah, I remember you telling me about that at Hayden's, and I was just shocked because I also had this misconception of what was really going on. Yep, and also this misconception of you know. People have this like moto mentality where there's millions of dollars floating around for guys like you, and there's just not. you got to move the decimal point yeah. over quite a few ways. A couple, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So that's that's some that's a cool little bit of news to find out. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, and and the, and kudos to Polaris because they really bought into it, and the RMK now would not be the way it is without you. It's the time, the timing, <laughs> the timing of it was just awesome. And, you know, I, I love Polaris for a lot of reasons. I love the love Polaris because obviously the product really fits my riding style, but more, I love, I love the brand because they, it's just a bunch of dudes who, and gals that work really hard for, for, the vision of, you know, making a sled light and fun. And, um, it just really fit my style and they wanted, they wanted me to be a part of it instead of pushing me away and just, here's your couple sleds. See you next year. And that's, that was, that was, uh, that team atmosphere was really cool. Yeah. And, and, you know, going back to how this podcast started, I mean, um, uh, us helping each other out, right. Mm -hmm. Um, you hooked me up with Polaris and I don't know if a lot of people out there know it, but we work really close, closely with Polaris as well. And I have Chris to thank for that. And, um, he's absolutely right. This is no BS. They are a real family of people who are just passionate about snowmobiles and the people come and go and they move sure. in and out, but the culture's still there Yeah, and they're just, willing to talk to you, take a phone call from little old Arctic effects, mm -hmm. you know, and, and come up with programs and stuff that, that benefit me and them. Um, you know, we had a snow check program for the first time this yeah, year. Yeah, I know. It was pretty cool. That was pretty awesome. So mm -hmm. hopefully that evolves into something else, Polaris, but, yeah. uh, you know, that'd be pretty awesome to have that on, Sweet. on deck for sales, um, for, for snow check snow wheels for people would be pretty cool. So cool. All right. Yeah. I, I, I taught you something new. What else you got? All right. Well, let's see. Uh, let me look at the list here. Um, yeah, here's a good one. What's the future of BBA? Or So wh where do you think you'll be? Where do you want to go, mm. I guess, with it? I mean, um, I kind of know your program. I, I think most people who are interested in coming out here with you, they, they do the research and they, they know what you're about to some degree. Um, they don't know what kind of punishment they're in for, but uh, um, it's all good punishment, by the yeah. way, because you walk away from it, you really do, just with so much more knowledge and a, and a really inspired attitude for snowmobiling again. But uh, where do you, you want to go now? Well, that's and that's a good question, and it's something that, 
you know, continue, continues to change. If you would ask me this two years ago, the, the answer would be different than it is today. Um, and we're fast forwarding over a lot of things of BBA and, you know, where it started and how it got here and whatever. But to answer that question where, you know, where, where are we going from here? We have, we're so, we're so fortunate. Uh, I'm very blessed to be in the position we are. So what, what started this company is Brands Backcountry Adventure, um, the tours, right? Yep. Take, taking people snowmobiling. The core of it. Yep, the core. And that core is as strong and healthy and as fun as it has ever been. Um, and, you know, we have just under 70% return rate of customers uh, year after year, which literally makes it like riding with friends. Yeah. Um, Kyle and I were talking about this driving down uh, from the years the other day we were talking and he's like, cause you know, you're always wondering what is the perception from the employees? Like, how is it at work? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it, are you like trying to, work your way out of this or are you trying to work your way more into it and you know and he's like um well what do you what do you think about how's the guiding going to be this year and 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 i'm like i don't know man it's uh, how do you think it's been going and he's like uh, for the last two years and i'm like this could go one way or the yeah, other yeah, right definitely for the last two years it's been about as good as it could be and i was like oh good Cause that's what I thought too. Um, you know, we, our program is just so, so refined and we, we have it so dialed where we can not only ensure that the clients have a great time, but as important, we can make sure that we all have fun because that's so important to, you know, when you have 14 dudes rolling in every three days, um, you know, they ride three days, and bail and we have the next group coming in if you are not fresh and excited and ready for that next group that is very easy to read and so from the tour side of things and we've the reason it has been so fun on the guide side of things is because we've been able to with the other facets of our business expanding you know the part side of things the online store the sled builds and all that stuff that has allowed us to back our schedule off on the tour side of things which just has made it way more enjoyable and um, not going literally 150 percent seven days a week from you know, January 1 till April 15. And so to be able to do that has really helped us enjoy the, the guiding side of things. So, so that portion of the business is really good right now and really yeah. fun and, and, and where we want it to be. Um, we have a, a great group of, of guides, um, which takes a lot of pressure off on me. Um, but when you, to go back to the question where, you know, what's the future of BBA? And so the future for us is, and something that is, has allowed us, uh, allowed our company to grow is, um, is the parts side of things. You know, it's, it's selling wraps, it's selling Fox shocks, it's selling DuraPro and climb and, you know, just, I mean, name all of the partners that we have. Um, it's, we've really enjoyed, building this portion of our business because what it does is the what 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 our statement is and what we take a tremendous amount of pride in is we're not selling you something just to sell you something we're selling you something to make your experience better we spend enough time on the snow to know what works and what doesn't work and um, one question we always ask uh, ourselves when we either are going to sell something or we're going or we're establishing a new partnership is would I buy this with my own money? Yeah. Um, and, That's a good question. and that is um, because, you know, all of these things that we, you know, all the YouTube videos we do and all, all the stuff we do telling people like you need, you, you would enjoy um, having this product. Um, we believe in that. And so that's, that's been pretty big. Yeah. I can't, um, I can't begin to tell you guys how, often this dude's on the phone it is it, it is a lot and i speculate that's why you do a lot of youtube videos to put that information out there because he will take any phone call as well as any one of his guides to explain why that product is something you want and how it works and if you're having a problem i mean i heard it for the past 
three, four days. It's just they re- you guys really take care of people. And that's kind of where we're coming from, too. That's why I believe we're the best. It's customer service part of it. Yep. You I mean, you, you can sell anything. It's following up afterwards. it's the it's yeah. yeah it's not the sale that is that gets you the longevity it's 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 about the product and the customer and the support and and all of that and so i you know i i think that is something that that's our, that's our future we um we enjoy that part um it's it's hard um you well know. yeah we were saying, talking about this earlier like it it's turned your um your full on the gas three months of the year into full on the gas nine months out of the year yep. with just a minute to get up and breathe in between. Yeah. It has definitely increased the, the time required a little bit of the stress. Um, you know, we're still, it's becoming less of a seasonal business. Um, you know, we are like, our off time is May and June. And then it's really like, we got to go back. I mean, we're, it's July, August. I mean, it's, it's heydays time, it, right? That's right. Everybody getting starts ready. preparing, sure. preparing in the end of July. So, yeah. and that's when you start getting all the phone calls. Yeah. That's when we start getting. Phone so, calls. uh, so future. Yeah. We're, we're looking at expanding and continuing to offer that, that support of, you know, trying to make, snowmobiling um as cool of an experience as possible and so that's where that is and that's what we've been trying to do as well with utv and moto is kind of fill in the gap Mm -hmm. you know and try to make it less of a seasonal business and more of an all-time and it's really hard to do yep it's really hard to do so um i feel you there yeah for sure um i mean going back to the guides um you know I kind of saw this coming, and I don't know if you did, if it was kind of a surprise to you, but BBA has kind of turned into this breeding ground for professional riders, right? And, There's and been they, a couple, huh? they all yeah. start as your clients. Mm-hmm. I know, and that's 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 the fun one, you know. And we've ta- we've talked um, a bunch with you know the old days, and you know having saying here and Ross, and um, and you know those were some some just incredible personalities, very passionate and driven people. Um, it was, it's interesting, like, uh, you know, saying, um, I mean, he came to me, well, Ross was 18 saying braces, 18. Yeah. I'm like, do you even have your driver's license? And, <laughs> um, and you know, those guys just had the same passion as I did. And, it's interesting. I think they would enjoy working for me a lot more now than they did back then. Yeah. I was a jerk. <laughs> um, I wasn't a jerk. I, well, maybe the jerk isn't the right word, but I was just very demanding and meticulous and you know all those things <laughs> i mean it was i i expected a lot how's that yeah um and um you know there's nothing that i would ask them to do that i w- hadn't done myself or wasn't willing to do um i worked just as hard um as i expected them to work yeah and and i think it is really I hope uh, if we were if they were sitting here talking that they would give me a bunch of shit for how I uh, how I was back then versus but they would be appreciative of what how it has set them up for today because you know to see Saiyan um, running a successful business in Star Valley and to see Ross doing the things that he is doing um, it's it makes it makes Daddy proud yeah that's for sure for sure yeah for sure. I mean, if you had to go go back and redo one thing, maybe it's five. I don't know. Um, would that be it? Not be a jerk, or like what? What would you do differently? Um, it, yeah. From from sled next days till now, I'm making it doesn't have to do with BBA. Maybe it's anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. I I tell you the one the one thing I would I know one thing for sure I would do differently is the priority all those years was all about building the business, building me as a brand and being successful to help support my family and employees and all of that. And that came at a huge cost for me from a, from a family standpoint as a husband, 
uh, as a, as a dad, um, you know, and, and every, every business owner can relate to those things. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't regret being mean to those guys and expecting a lot out of them. I don't regret that. Um, it's made them who they are and they're awesome. Sure. Um, I do regret, um, though that time that I could have done things just a little different to include them. My, my, like, let's just say my family mm -hmm. instead of separating and pushing away. I have a lot to undo there and I'm working on that now. Yeah. I, I, I miss that I, or I wish just those things would have been different, um, to, to make things more, it could have been more enjoyable with them being a part of that instead of it being all about me, you know? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. Um, kind of went through the same thing, you know? And, uh, so when, when you're at the lodge, right, it's Chris comes to dinner, um, sits down, talks to everybody. We have a little speech about what happened that day and how to improve and stuff. But it's always Chris is going back to his family, mm -hmm. you know, and um, that that wasn't a thing back in the day, mm -hmm. right? I know. So I, I know. Well, it was, I got to go fix the arm you yeah, broke. And right. so it's in the shop until midnight and, and all of that. And so, you know, it's, it's hard. You think you're doing it for the right reason. You know, I'm working this hard and doing all of these things for the family, like for, yeah, but you know, when you look back at it, like I look back at it now, I'm like, eh, I could have done things a little different there and it would have been better at this point. But, um, you know, it chalk it up to being a young man, you know, we yeah. all make mistakes yeah. you know, and, uh, definitely and we made plenty of those and, and hindsight's 2020. That's right. Yeah, Every gotta, single time. Gotta look for. And, and I mean, I guess that's, you know, talking about the future, like that's what I'm excited about is to, you know, keep learning and, and just keep pushing. Yep. Awesome. So, I mean, what's the biggest obstacle you think you had to overcome? Was it X games? Was it something personal? Was it, uh, was it getting sled necks going? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. What, what do you What do you think the biggest yeah. obstacle? The was? biggest one. Well, I I'll say the biggest obstacle. Let's just we'll just kind of do this. The biggest obstacle to get Brands Backcountry Adventure going was permitting. Uh, oh yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I said, uh, <laughs> sir. You need a permit to do this. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'll go to the permit store and go get a permit. <laughs> That oh, no, no, no. doesn't work that way. So from a business standpoint, that was really challenging. Um, that's that's why I'm in uh, Buena Vista versus um, where I was up in Kremlin up by rabbit ears and stuff. Well, we went camping looking for houses. Remember, Remember yeah, that? Down here. Yep. Back when you're still over in Kremlin, you're like, I got to get out of here. Yep. Uh, there's helicopters and stuff. Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, I need to go do this the right way. And so that was, and that was, that was really crazy. Um, that was another like, hold your breath and pray that this all works out and another all in and, you know, of a gigantic loan for literally a piece of paper, mm -hmm. you know, like that. I mean, I didn't have that money, not even close to have that money, but I knew it's what I needed to like for longevity for my business. Well, that's one of the things I admire about you. I, it seems like Chris Brandt always finds a way. And, and that's, that's a hard thing to, um, that's a hard thing to do mm -hmm. to, to come out on top. But I, you know, you're such a good businessman, such a thinker on different avenues to get stuff done. Yeah. And th I mean, there's that, but it, there is no replacement for just work, work mm -hmm. ethic and work hard and don't burn bridges, treat people like you want to be treated. And, you know, that those, those things go a long way. Um, it's some of the, it's the attributes of literally the employees I have right now. I mean, and, and, and that I have had, you know, I, I mean, the work ethic of every single employee that has been here for more than one year is that's the reason they were here more than one year. Um, the staff I have right now is they, they are incredible. Uh, they kill it. They kill it. They, yeah. They, and, they really and do. And it's, no one's afraid of work. Um, you know, I just, I can ask them to do 
and they, I don't even have to ask them. They know what they know what needs to be done, and that's been pretty pretty incredible. And I can say that about everyone who's worked for me. I mean, it's been it it's not just me that has got me here. Um, it is <laughs> I have had uh, some incredible people helping me uh, along the way. Well, I mean, you almost helped me move out here because that trip I could, to come out here, I brought Tracy with me, mm -hmm. and that's uh, my wife, Tracy. Hi, Tracy. And um, we, man, I had her. It was close, she, huh? She was down to come out here, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had all these obstacles in my way at the time. Uh, you know, moving the business was the last thing on my mind. It was just getting out here because I loved it so much, and I, I knew this is where Arctic Effects belongs. I think a lot of people uh, are – still to this day surprised to hear we're from michigan yeah you know we get questions about hey can i get my wrap installed well you know if you want to travel 22 hours you know i see the your zip code is they're like oh man i thought you guys are right here and we get that all the time and uh so it was it was really cool to bring her out here and show her what it's all about out here and to meet you guys and um man we all almost had it yeah but stuff got in the way like had to sell a cabin and That's life, have a dude. place up north. And by then, two years uh, went by and yep. kids grow up and there you are. So, you never know. You're, life is still young. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure. Yeah, sure. Dude, so, these are good ones. Yeah. Usually I, I'm the person asking the questions. This is I fun. know. That's that's why I thought this would be a little different, you know, to kind of work into the Insight Series. Is, you know, we can put this out there and have yeah. a little prelude to it. Um, let's see what else we got here. You want to take a look at that? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Let's see. Um, I mean, yeah. we can talk about me late. I mean, in a little bit, if you okay. want. I I love talking about me. Well, so. well I think we'll do that too. <laughs> um, I like um, I like this one. What's one thing you feel like most folks assume about you that's a complete one hundred and eighty from what it actually is? See, I got ten right on a list right on my mind. I can't wait to hear what yours are. Sure. Um, I mean, I think there's a ton of misconception, right? Um, that you know during a podcast you're supposed to turn your phone off that's a misconception i didn't get mine but you're uh, more popular than me so. uh so okay let me turn my phone off here um yeah i you know i think the misconception well i mean first first and foremost misconception is like you know i i make a lot of money and I don't, I snowmobile, I, I snowmobile, I, I snowmobile, that's all I do is just wait for the snow to come and go snowmobile and that, I mean, what we put out on social media, that's one thing. And, and, and I mean, it does look pretty glorified, you know, and, and I mean, again, I'm not taking anything away from what I do, uh, from what it is, but I don't, I don't make a lot of money i work my ass off for money yeah you know um and i try to be a good business person and i try to have great relationships and i try to be innovative in the industry and i try to do things different than everybody else um to create uniqueness and you know those are the things that have gotten me to where i am um i don't have a uh, hundred snowmobiles uh, that I, I, this is one of my favorite misconceptions is that it must be nice to be sponsored so you can ride like that and not care if you break something. <laughs> that is the, ex, that is 100% the definition of what that question was. That's 180 degrees from, if you don't think I'm pissed off as you that I, I bet an A-arm, um, the, the little A-arm ferry doesn't bring me one. Yeah. The little Polaris helicopter doesn't just fix my snowmobile and do, you know, like that comes out of the bottom line that comes out of my, my bottom line, no matter. And so for people to like, it's, it used to get me really fired up and I would actually like write comments and like get angry about it. But now it's like, I don't know. It's, it's just, troll bait is what I know. It is. Yeah, but, but you know, when you're passionate about something, it's easy to get well riled oh, up. Oh, right? definitely. Yeah. Guilty. And, and you know, like, um, and you guys will see Jacob's going to put a little piece together. Like, you know, I've totaled the snow build just about every year I've ridden one. Um, and over the last few years, it's been getting less and less because the snow builds are so damn good and capable. <laughs> like you really got to do something dumb to like, I mean, you got to let go or do something crazy. Right. But back in the early days when I didn't have money, that was, I did not. And this is the difference. Okay. The difference is, most people ride knowing like if I break this, I don't have the money to fix it. 
I didn't have the money to fix it either, but that I didn't let that hold me back. Right. And that's how I got good at fixing my own junk. I couldn't take it to the dealer and have them fix something. I didn't have the money to do that. I had to learn to do it myself. And so I never, ever thought of like, I am not going to do this line or push myself because if I wreck my snowmobile, I'm not going to be able to ride tomorrow. That wasn't, that was never it. I was there to push myself, believe in myself. And yeah, it, it ended up on the wrong way many times, many times. but uh, those were lessons. They weren't mistakes. They were lessons. Um, and so, you know, those, those are a couple misconceptions like that. I, I like to talk about. Yeah. I find myself, you know, Obviously, I follow you on Instagram, right? Uh, so, oh, you do, my, yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. You count, count, count that one uh -huh. on there, yeah. So, um, I see the comments too, and it, <laughs> I just laugh because I know, oh, that got under Chris's skin, I'll yeah. bet, or then maybe it didn't. I don't know. You but. know what's <laughs> awesome about the comments, and this is what I love, and this is you know where I I take a lot of pride in this is that I don't have to say anything anymore. I've got this this very passionate fan base or people that follow me that will see a comment like that and just say shut up yeah that's not how he is that's stupid you don't even know him that's it's not like that and that's i mean talk about they just, a rewarding, they just come in and it's yeah. a really rewarding feeling i don't i don't need to just i mean i've been i've dedicated my entire life to this industry i don't need to go justify anything for me um, I have put everything out there. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, I am in a position now where I can, I feel very confident. And when I say something, it's not, it's based off of a lot of experience and knowledge and, and relationships and all of that stuff. And so that's, that's a lot of fun for me to be in that position now where it wasn't like that 10 years ago or 20 years ago, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's keyboard jockeys, you know, you, you get them and, um, they just, I mean, hey, I don't want to say it's ignorance. I don't want to make you guys mad and put comments on my page either. But, uh, you know, or, or do. I don't care. But yeah. anyway, um, I I think that they it's down to the misconceptions question, you know, where they just don't know what you've been through in this industry. And that's kind of what Insight's about is to let people know, you know, what's what it's really like. Yeah. Because I think that's the disconnect, you know. Well, and I think that's what's going to be really fun for the people who watch your series is that it's much like this. It's, you know, like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and that's really cool. And, and you know, kind of, well, because I definitely don't want to go down, like, talking about the negatives of social <laughs> media because that's a, that's a podcast in itself. But <laughs> the biggest thing, you know, and it's, it's really unfortunate is that before social media, um, if someone didn't like something, they didn't have an outlet to say it. And unfortunately, there's a lot of negative people that feed off of being able to show that negativity. And unfortunately, the negativity, uh, it you know, one negative comment outdoes 10 positives. And I think that's really, that's really tough. And, and you know, right now, like people, the, you know, so like here's an example, right? I have 275,000 followers on Instagram, okay? And I do a, a post about, um, I'll do this one. How about the, a new, the new carbon hood that is, um, it's a super cool product. It's innovative. It's um, manufactured by a dude who is literally like, like us, like has, yeah. it has very little, has put his pride and soul into this and leveraging like, all of his assets, you know, like to make this happen. It's our story. Yeah. 12 years yeah. later. Yeah. And, and this dude, you know, this dude comes to me like, um, for help and, and like, I think the product's cool. Um, I love his work ethic. I love his story. And so I'm like, yeah, dude, I'll help you. Like, yeah. Um, let's, let's do this. And, you know, post some pictures of, and, you know, then you get all of these, these haters because they don't like the way it looks you know and and you get you, i don't see how you can uh, you, I mean. you know, well i mean it's and and it's fine and that's and my point of that is like i don't care if you like it or you don't like it where is it your place to come on here on my page and just be an absolute jackass and like to put someone someone's project that they've 
put their heart and soul into and you who don't even own a Polaris, you come in on there and say, that's the ugliest thing I've ever said. I've never spent my money on it. If you don't like something, who cares? Move <laughs> on. But so like, you know, these, these, these 10 people with the negative comments are influencing 275, you know, these, this, this mass, like uh, someone who wouldn't have thought anything about it, like, oh, that's kind of cool. And you keep scrolling instead of they see all these negative comments, like, what's this all about? Like wh this, this world and this, this social thing is just, it's like, it sucks that it used to be really fun for yeah. me. Social used to be really fun. And now it's like, you have to be so politically correct. You have to be so mindful. You have to like, and, and it's got, it's gotten not fun. Um, I enjoy lots of the parts of social media, but uh, there's definitely more of the negatives uh, than there has been in the past. Yeah. And there's no way to figure it out. It's human nature. And I just feel like you gotta not try to, push human nature away or believe, I guess believe that it's anything other than what it is. Yeah. And you just work within the confines of that. Yeah. Anyway. Well, so let's do this. Um, do you, what, cause I got a couple questions for you. Okay. We're, good, we're good. sitting at 50 minutes here, so <laughs> we're getting there. Um, what do you have any, like one last or do you have anything else? Or you want me to go to you or I don't know Jacob will help. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because Chris Brandt actually did start out on a Polaris. I did. I, I mean, all, all the cat guys out there, I'm sorry. That's where it started. Um, personally, I, I love watching you on a cat. Um, yeah. But I've, I've watched you do way more on a Polaris than, I mean, it's just amazing what you can do. And, yeah. uh, you know. Um, I, I mean, I enjoy, I, it's, you know. I loved all of it, and yeah. I think that's kind of where we're going to roll into here. And to to recap that, you know, like my Articat years were some of the best. You know, like what I enjoyed most about it was that progression and that like that love for the sport of tree riding started with Articat, um, and. You know, that's a, that's a, a part that will never, never leave. Um, but what's interesting, you know, like you guys all see me have this love for, you know, the old indies and all yeah. of this stuff. Well, I, you know, I, to be honest, I. Another misconception because people think it's because you're with Polaris and it's not. No, it has <laughs> nothing to do with that. I mean, you know. I still have the very first snowmobile I bought with my own money, my 1990 Indy 500. Like that is a very, very memorable sled uh, for me. Like, so for me, I like going back to those days. I don't, it, I don't have the desire to have an 05 M7 here, even though it's one of the most instrumental sleds to my career. But I don't want to go ride it. Like I, because the way you ride an 05 M7 is the way I ride uh, a 2023 9R. Yeah. And I'm going to go ride the 9R. Are you sure. Right. For sure. Yeah. And, and so like that is kind of where that all is, is like this 01 with a triple triple in it and a holes chassis, like that's cool to me. Yeah, you know, we had a lot of fun the other day. I right? know. Those things, right. Man, it was a blast. Um, and then, you know, the XLT and the sound and knee on the seat and, you know, falling off the running boards cause they're so slippery <laughs> cause you're not supposed to be standing up at any time. Um, you know, like I, I like that. I enjoy that. And if, but if I want to go mountain riding, I'm going to go ride or, you know, if I'm going to go technical ride, right. I'm going to ride <laughs> my, my yeah. new toy. Um, but you know, I think that's, what's been really fun and is to, is reliving the the passion and the heritage of what got me going in the sport initially. And at a time where, you know, my parents didn't have money, um, I had to buy my own snowmobiles. If I wanted to be a part of this sport, I had to go work my butt off. You know, I was 15 and I worked, I worked the, I worked at the, after school, I worked at the nursing home uh, serving food, and then the nursing home was right next to the bowling alley, and then at the bowling alley, I'd work the night shift, you know, uh, at the bowling alley, and then I would, you know, go do school and then do it again. And then once I started hanging around enough at the dealership, they like, if you come back, if you're here tomorrow, we're putting you to work. I'm like, I'll be here tomorrow. See ya. You know, and so like I had to, I needed money 
to buy snowmobiles. And so like those are really special to me and it was really rewarding working hard and then, you know, being able to buy something like that. Well, it's got you the ethic that built got you where you are today. So it's it's cool to look back and appreciate that, you know, yeah. especially internally. Yeah. You know, so cool you got any questions for me yeah uh, i mean enough about you yeah uh, enough about me so i want to um for this last last part of this podcast um let's talk about you Uh, um so (laughs) i think what's really cool so you look back um so thinking of the mountain riding style in 05 and how i was a part of that and you know kind of like kind of the forefront right uh, of that foundation how you are that person when it comes to putting wraps on snowmobiles. I, I think I am. I mean, I can't take all, like, there's there's a lot of guys out there who were doing stuff for racing, you know, snowcross and things like that. So those guys were getting stickers done and things like that. Um, you know, I wasn't really into power sports until I got my first snowmobile in 2002. I think I bought a buddy's old Indy 700. Mm-hmm. And so um, they took me Does out. Does he with still have it? Does he want to sell it? <laughs> Calm down. It was a, yeah. I think it's a little too new. For yeah, it you. is too new. You're it, was, right. it was a ninety nine. Oh so, yeah, I didn't like the ninety nine. We're on the cusp. I didn't like the ninety nine. So, yep. but my buddies took me out today. You got to try this. I'm like, oh, great. I'll you know I'll go do it. And um, that led me to buy my first fire cat. Mm. Uh, I got an 04 fire cat with um, sorry art cat, the ugliest graphics I ever seen in my life. It was so the, you uh, decided to do something about it. Yeah, so I decided. Well, I you know um, I'm going to take this down to a local wrap shop. Um, they weren't called wrap shops; they're called sign shops back then, mm-hmm. and uh, see what he could do with it. So um, Bill Betts taught me a lot. Uh, Wild Bill signs. Uh, he did this flame job on it, which was okay, but uh, I was just really really basic and i think he charged around 300 400 bucks to do it and um that's when you know me and my buddy phil talked about it and he's like you know you could probably do that and yeah i'm gonna give it a shot so um that's kind of where it all started with the articat firecat and and coming up with this idea that we could change the looks of them and i was so passionate about doing it um, I thought there was more people out there. Yeah. So, um, so that's, that's kind of my question, right? Is like, so the, the snowmobiles are coming out. They already have stickers on them. Mm-hmm. Um, what, like, it's a little scary to think like, okay, I'm going to go put a bunch of work in and I'm going to hope that people want to make their snowmobiles look different and put some stickers on it. And yeah. They're going to have to pay me for that. Right. Yeah. That's, you, you sound like my wife did back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I was, a, I was an engineer working for GM at the time, uh, contracted in there, not direct. Um, I went through a, a lot of iterations, uh, estimators for weld tools and things like that. Um, I was an elect- a machine tool electrician for a long time. Um, so I was on the control side of it, and then I was on the... Uh, you know, the estimation side of it. So um, real good years. I learned a lot. Um, you know, it gave me kind of that. I've, I've always been a doodler and an artist and that kind of thing just on the side. Um, my mom kind of fostered that, that in me. And uh, so I, I kind of put the two together, you know, this world and that world. And um, it really took some local customers who to really get this thing off the ground because, believe me, it, you know, from 2004 to probably 06 or 07, there was a lot of iterations of this to try to figure out what worked and what didn't. Mm-hmm. And it took some local customers with some really great ideas, which forced me to try to figure out how to to wrap snowmobile completely, but it's not really a wrap. I mean, I've I've had that word forced on me, and I had yeah, to buy into it. It's not a wrap. I no. had to buy into it, and we still get comments to this day, why are you calling it a wrap? It's a graphics kit. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a company out at the time, I think, that kind of fostered that called Sled Wraps, mm-hmm. right? I think they're Deviant Ink now or something mm-hmm. like that, one of our competition. Um, kudos to you guys. I really like your artwork. It's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I think that's kind of where it came, like rap, 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 rap. Um, and so, you know, you, really what it is is a graphics kit. And so that forced me to figure out how to – make that on my own so um once i figured that out off of a request from a customer 
and it was pretty basic at the time on a fire cat. Um, he posted on Hardcore Sledder. Do you remember Hardcore mm-hmm. Sledder? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that led to another guy. And that guy, those two guys led to three more guys. Yeah. And it, you know, it took months for that to happen, but that's really where I said, this is it. I can do this. This is the thing. Yeah. So um, that's kind of where it came from. And I hired my first employee in uh, 2008, I think. Nice. Um, we operated out of my basement for years. And well, years. I would never forget Chad Colby. You know, you were stuck somewhere. The the time you the first time you ever came out. Yeah. You and Chad came out. Take you snowmobiling. I'm like, boy, this guy's terrible at snowmobiling. <laughs> His wraps are cool. Graphics are cool. Sorry. Um, Chad's, he's like, hey, you you need to get hooked up with this guy. I mean, he's crushing it in his basement. And, you know, it, that, that was, and like he, he shows me pictures of, and it was a pretty sick setup, to be honest. In, in, I built it out right. Dude, it was, I mean, it was it, sweet. You couldn't tell you walked down to that basement. Yeah, a little low ceilings, but yeah. it looked like a straight up graphic shot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't doing anything half assed. Uh, yep, that's for sure. And and you know, I think that what what was really cool was I like I told you at the first part of this podcast or was my whole goal to try to build myself up was differentiating myself from someone or from everybody else. Yeah. And when I saw your product, I'm like because at first I'm like, he, like he's bringing Chad. I knew him from the Arctic Cat right, days. Right. He's bringing and he's bringing this dude, and I just I'm like, oh god, another guy who's gonna ride for free. Sweet. Um, well, I didn't. You <laughs> paid. I know, and that because that's what I thought it was gonna be, Chad. And because Chad asked me, he's like, I'm like, yeah, I can help him out, but dude, I need to pay my mortgage, but, um, and, and, and that was a big deal for me. I know like, cause for I you didn't too, have any right? money. You didn't have any money. And, and so I, I, like, we didn't even get to, this is what's fun, right? Like we didn't even get to that point, but, um, what happened there was you saw a potential. I saw a potential and we're like, Hey, we, I think we can make this work. Let's potential together. Yeah, this could be really cool. And and so I immediately went home after that trip. And I remember our conversation at the end when I handed you the money, right? Yeah. And I said, it, this is going to work out for both of us. And one thing I can tell you, it's it's personal to me, you know. And no matter what happens, I'm always going to be there for you, you know. Yeah. Um, hell or high water, so... Well, and I just think about, you know, it's the same thing like me, like at the time where I was like, man, I, I, I know, like I had to give, you know, get a a certain person in or a certain group in and had to give a deal and had to work twice as much. And it was the same thing for you. Like me saying, Hey, I think we should wrap the fleet and like, we'll just have this sick presence and we'll, we'll like really start knocking this out. And it's the same thing for you. Like, Holy cow! To pay for ten sleds and vinyl and all this stuff like it's a substantial. I was stoked about it. Like <laughs> it's good. completely opposite because when I came out, see, here, I thought the other. I'm like, oh man, how are we going to do this? <laughs> I was stoked about it. I went straight home and I started designing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was really excited about it, and it 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 was it was you and it was the setup that you had done right. Like it was legit cool, and your shop was cool, and it, you had you know, the accommodations and everything. Awesome. And, but going out and seeing what you were trying to build firsthand out on the mountain with, you know, showing people how to ride and taking Mm -hmm. out people out and having fun. Um, I was all in. I like, I know all that's, that's why, that's why we're still here. (laughs) All right. So we're going to fast forward. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of start wrapping this up here, but, but but we're going to fast forward. So you've, um, you you literally have had so many innovations. Um, this is just me personally um, looking at what you have done. Tons of innovations in this sport for for the graphics side of things, and one which was something that you literally put your heart and soul into was sled wrapper. Um, looking at what you are able to do with making the experience um, really awesome and fun to put. It's not only just putting, 
you know, a wrap on your sled. It's about the process of, and customize and being, you know, just really taking that to heart. And, you know, all these things you started, your competition had to follow. Right. Yes. Um, and yep. I, and I think that's really neat. And, you know, you're right. They owe me a Christmas. Card. They do. Don't just they? Want one of you guys. Yeah. Uh, and you know, there's been so many changes in the the type of vinyl and color and and what and to think about what what a cool setup was ten years ago to what I mean, the sky is the limit. Yeah, now. I mean, they're you know constantly improving coverage, constantly improving design, constantly improving you know, and and it's same as you. It's not me. It's it's the people in my life Got who, team, who yeah. make that happen. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the team. Yeah. So um, kudos to those guys who you know support me every day and and do the hard work so um but yeah i mean it's it's constant innovation you got to stay on top of it when we came out with our sled wrapper app in 2014 um it it was another thing i don't have this money Mm -hmm. i don't know if any of you guys out there know how much it takes to build a website but you don't want to know it it is and it's a constant it's like a, a ball and chain around your ankle because it's constantly breaking and yep. you're, you're constantly have to nurture the baby you know and um so it but it's something you have to do yeah right it's so part of you it. can't be scared of it you just got to drive forward and so now yeah all the a lot, all our competition has kind of followed our lead with this you know the it used to be just this uh the sled wrap kind of laid flat you know mm. fanned out like a butterfly and you could pick the red one or the green one or whatever but when we came out with sled wrapper it changed the game yeah and so we were fortunate enough that maybe no one else had the money to catch up for a minute, but when they realized the difference was night and day, mm-hmm. they saw the need for it too. And so um, uh, I, that's kind of really what fostered our relationship, relationship with Polaris is they, you know, they saw that innovation and they thought it was really cool. And Polaris has innovated a lot of things online since then. Too, well, look so. at, I mean, you look at, what you can do for snow check uh, from a Amazing. configuration standpoint, it, it is unreal. It's they really went cool. above and beyond. It's, it's pretty just, neat. yeah, um, yeah. And it's got me going, wow, 3D. Yeah. Wow, well, how can I make that Wouldn't mine? That be cool? You know? Yeah. Yep. So it just, again, you got to move the decimal point over. Yeah. A yeah. Over, over, over yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, we're going to, we're going to end this with one last question that you said, you said to me and it really made me think, um, what's the future for Arctic FX? what's what what's your goals what's your plan what how do you make how how do you make sleds look cooler like or or is that in the plan what is the plan well i mean we started making them cooler this year with uh with chrome and prismatic and a couple years back we started adding different finishes man i don't know where it's gonna go Mm -hmm. i mean a lot of that you know we buy our vinyl from a supplier and they innovate and we work with them really closely and give them ideas and they give us ideas so um you know we've been using them geez for forever it seems like you know since probably 2012 or 13 and um our relationship with them is really good it's constant innovation on that side of things and they do a really good job of it so um they've really helped us out a lot but innovation i mean i'd love to go 3d Mm. that that's that's probably the future of it you can put your vr glasses on spin the sled around change colors by just touching them and i mean that i think that that's probably where it's going yeah. i don't know if we'll be around to see it uh, you know yeah. but uh hopefully i can the the thing that i've built the baby i've nurtured i can hand off and keep the dream alive infinitely hopefully oh. so well jordan it's been uh it's been cool you know we kind of came on the scene at the same time yeah and we've grown together and here we are in my shop in 2022 talking about it uh and and in 2002 we were wondering like how are we gonna do this <laughs> yeah you know so um congratulations man um again you've you've earned it you've um you've been an innovator in this industry it's gotta make you pretty proud when you know you go to like west or togety or uh, up and you know you see all these snowmobiles with yeah with wraps all over it the definitely place it's does. Pretty, pretty cool You've and got... it's cool to see the competition too because it is yeah wraps rap, make more wraps make more wraps like as soon as you get the bug you're in i look at it like this this indie project we worked on yeah watching that thing come together piece by piece and transforming into this thing's bigger brother mm-hmm. um it's pretty neat that's what it's all about yeah and, and i love i love that you still have uh, you know you you can tell you have that passion like you love this project and it's like oh, that's cool 
I, I love putting on stickers and you know that it's not just a job for me it's what i tell everyone if you can do something you love yep as a job it's not work that's so. right well awesome uh Good to get our first podcast done for the year. It was even a long one for all you guys who were complaining that uh, our podcasts weren't long enough. So I feel like we could go another hour. You want? I know, hour? right? <laughs> uh, so jo uh, Jordan at Arctic FX, thanks for joining us. Make sure you uh, go to go to their website. It's actually really cool. I just warn you, um, you will not be on there for five minutes. You'll be on there for five hours it's because amazing. it's really fun. It is. It's really fun and cool. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, thanks a lot. We'll uh, be back back uh, after Christmas with the crew and we'll be uh, a little bit more consistent with some podcasts for this year. So thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> oh, wait. That's the wrong one. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Um, yeah. There we go. All right. Peace out.